you've just launched Court. Can you tell us a bit about it? <laughs> Duncan, you do your homework. You're amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a wine social network um, uh, focused around aggregating scores. So, you know, I hate when people do this, but to make it quick, you know, it's Yelp plus Facebook, right? God willing, it's 100th successful. I'll be just fine. Um, what's really a lot of fun, though, is I think it, it's really uh, it's really conducive to an iPhone app. And ironically, being here in, in the UK, uh, Box UK is making me an amazing iPhone app, uh, and I'm really excited about it. You know, I want to I want to let wine loose, and I want it to go to the masses. It shouldn't be about Robert Parker or me or Chances Robinson. It should be about the people's voices, and uh, that's what Cork aims to do. Okay, and is it just uh, recommending wine uh, or recommend? It's people. It's people reviewing wine. Okay. And then commenting on each other's reviews and on their walls, so engaging, kind of like if we all got together in a virtual wine bar, right? Just tasting wines. What do you think? What do you think? Everybody putting it's aggregate scoring. So one wine may have thirty different reviews with different scores, and there's an average. Uh, so it's just a community of wine lovers centered around the action of reviewing wine. Okay, and then the uh, obvious question: commercialization. Yeah, I mean, you know, how I'm going to my monetize? Yeah. I mean, I got a sneaky little plan for this one. Uh, wineries have fan pages, and uh, they have the ability to email everybody out, and there's some other analytics behind it. So we, we give wineries the ability for $1,000 a year to take control of their fan page. That's been very successful. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not, you know, I love the free economy, and I think there's a lot of reasoning to it, but you've got to pay your people, and the lights have to go on, and... There's things, you know, that need to be addressed. So, you know, and we think we bring an enormous value to the wineries at that price point, knowing what they spend coming from the wine industry on bullcrap, bullshit, horrible advertising, banner ads that do nothing for them. This is a far better uh, allocation of their funds. It's certainly let a lot of uh, smaller brands come right up. Yeah, I mean, smaller, bigger. I mean, big brands in this whole web um, that we live in, this social web, have a lot to gain. You know, they need to become more humanized. And so uh, I, I think it's for big, small, medium. And are they going to be able to put store stuff in there? So are they going to be able to put, uh, like, ship stuff straight to people from the... Depen- you know, America's a mess with shipping laws. So, um, so depending on the states, they can ship to, of course. Okay, that's great. And Wine Library TV, uh, what's, is it, it's still great. Trucking it's still along, growing. Man, you know, almost on 800 episodes, growth is there. You know, I'm excited about it. Probably the thing I'm most excited about right now is, you know, my upcoming book, Crush It. So, crushitbook.com, little plug action. Um, you know, that comes out in two weeks. I'm very excited about it. I think it's uh, it, it talks about passion and how to make money around the thing you love the most. Um, I've been able to do that. I don't think I'm that special. I think it's more of the fact that the uh, web has changed so much. And uh, I think it's important. And so it covers uh, for entrepreneurs or just for the general public? Both. Both. But obviously entrepreneurs are going to know what to do with it. <laughs> uh, and any other upcoming releases? You're, you know. Yeah, I mean, I have a gourmet food website that I'm probably going to announce right here on stage today. So this is a little scoop for you guys. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a hustler. You know, I'm working hard. I want to scratch a lot of different itches. And, uh, and I think it's important that people understand that you have to do what you love. And if you want to try something new, you should. Stretched in is bullshit. Just be happy. And you spend a lot of tra- time traveling back and forth, U.S., U.K., Europe, I France. I just landed from a 22-hour flight. I was in Hawaii, it seemed like, a few minutes ago. <laughs> so, yes, I do. What's the, what's the strangest place that you've been out to, to check out wine? To check out wine? Probably, uh, strangest place, you know, <laughs> probably places in America, like Oklahoma and Arizona <laughs> and North Carolina. You know, because those aren't, you know, when I traveled that far for wine, I'm going to wine places. Spain's, the Italy's, things of that nature. Um... Maybe Greece would be, you know, a place that, you know, has a smaller wine scene but has some great stuff. I've been there, um, so. I was thinking more sort of Russia, Straits Range, Eastern I have, Bloc. I haven't done the Eastern Bloc really that much, even though I was born in Belarus. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry I let you down. <laughs> That's okay. And are you doing all this in uh, all the sort of ventures you're doing? You're doing it multi-language so that the whole... Yes and no. Corked will be... We're launching a French and Spanish version of Corked. Um, Wine Library TV, you know, 
I can't speak any other languages, so we may have somebody <laughs> translate it. I can do a little Russian, choo choo. Uh, you know, so, but it's something I give a lot of thought to. I mean, again, the internet's 14 years old. The one that we all know, it's 14 years old. The world is becoming more connected. Multi-language, multilingual aspects of all businesses is going to become more and more imperative, um, and it's something I give a lot of thought to. Okay, excellent. Thank cool. you very much for your time. Nice.